Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will make this mini charm square Christmas stocking ornament. It's fun and easy, so let's get started. I had the idea that I wanted to design a mini Christmas stocking ornament that would feature the mini charm squares. So these are two and a half inch squares, and so I drafted this pattern to be two and a half inches wide. And I was not entirely successful with my original idea, but I did manage to work it out. I like my stockings to face to the right, so the toe pointing to the right, and I've cut out a 50 weight Pellon interfacing stocking two lining pieces and a backing. And remember the back of the stocking, the toe needs to go in the opposite direction so that when you finish it, there's the back. I quickly discovered that since I wanted to feature this pink background deer, this is my intention is to feature this exact design, this deer motif, um, that the two and a half inches wasn't really wide enough once the toe got started here. So I've cut this three inches. This is a three inch square that surrounds the Dear Christmas Deer signature motif. So the first thing I want to do is set this three quarters of an inch below the top of the pattern. I also like my deer to face to the right. And so, of course, I had to cut this from one of the large layer cake pieces. And it is pretty tricky to find the exact right facing deer, um, exact, not too close to the edge. And anyway, I managed to cut that from a layer cake. I've got my machine, my trusty Bernina, threaded with red thread, and I'm going to begin with the cuff. You can see how it's right to the bare edges, but it's okay because once I take that quarter inch seam allowance, it'll be well within the margins. I'm going to stitch across here with a quarter inch seam allowance, and then I'll press it flat, and then I'm going to do a decorative stitch, which is why I've got my machine threaded up with, um, with red thread because I just like the way that the red thread embroidery looks. I was paying attention to the direction of this bell right here to make sure that it was not upside down. I'll press that and then I'm going to do a machine embroidery, maybe a feather stitch. Now there was a lot of trial and error to get this just right. In fact, I'll show you my first attempts. This was my first one, which was a failure. <laughs> Um, not only does it have these uh, 90 degree angles, which just never look quite right, but also this didn't quite, it, it was just a fail. And then this one turned out okay, except the proportions are off. These patches wind, wound up too small, and then this one was too big. And then I did white stitching, which was fine. I did only feather stitches, but I thought I could do better. So this one I think was the most successful, even though I still have some issues. I like the red stitching and I like how these patches are a little bit uh, more uniform in the amount of space that they're taking up. So this is the winner and this is the one I'm going to try to do right now. So let's start with the heel. This is the heel. And what I did was I followed the shape of the circle. So what I want is to set this one here and stitch it right there so that folds down and I want it to come across the center of the circle about like this and then I'll stitch right here and fold it back like this. All right, let's give it a try. So I'll press it. I'm not concerned about this right here because I have another piece that I'm going to put here, but I just want to make sure it's covering up the entire pattern, the um, bottom edge. Now I'll do an embroidery stitch here, maybe a blanket stitch. 
I'm going to trim this piece even with the edge so I can see where I'm going. The important thing is for this to be to the bottom of the stocking. Remember, we have another piece that's coming right here. So as long as this goes to the bottom of the pattern, the bottom of the white foundation, we'll be okay. I don't want any of this white showing here either. This is tricky. Get it just right. Stitch this one right here. Looks like we did all right. We got to the bottom of the foundation. So we'll add some embroidery here. And then I'll just trim this to see where we're going with this last piece. So this one has to go across the entire toe about like this, from here to here, straight across. And then I'm going to add my machine embroidery. There we go. And then trim. I'm trimming, I'm looking at the back as I trim and I'll trim again. I'm going to switch my machine to off-white thread and then I'm going to stitch all the way around very close to the edge. And my stocking front is complete. Now we'll assemble the stocking. Right sides together. This will be the front of the stocking and one lining piece. And this will be the back of the stocking and one lining piece. Right sides together, I'm going to stitch across the top edges. Now I'll open these up and I always press this, um, this seam allowance in the center here always toward the front of the stocking, which is counterintuitive, but that's what works. So right sides together, I'm gonna pin and stitch this all the way around. I'm matching up the center seam allowance. I'll pin those first and then I'll pin all the way around and I'll leave an opening right here. Here we go. I will leave it open here at the bottom of the lining and I will stitch all the way around and stop here and I'll be right back. That looks good. Before I turn it right side out, I'm going to clip these inner curves and then I'm going to trim the seam allowance a little bit. Now we're trimmed and clipped and I will turn this to the right side through the opening in the bottom. This looks good. This is exactly how it, I expected it to look. I will press this and tuck in this seam allowance. Press that. And now I'll sew this opening closed. And I'm go just gonna top stitch across here. This is going to be way in the inside of the stocking and it won't show, so I'm not too concerned about it. When I say top stitch, this is what I mean. I just top stitched. Now I'll turn this to the inside. That looks good. Now to finish, I will make a, um, a hanging loop from the red and white Baker's twine. I like red with pink. I think the red looks good. and then I'll add a bow. Tying off the streamers and then I'll add just a smudge of hot glue at the center of the bow just 
to make sure that it doesn't come untied. So I'll put a smudge right there. And then I kind of pinched it together. Stocking is cute. I will describe how to draft the pattern. Sometimes I think if I just set it right there where you can see it easily, you can figure it out. Okay, so it's two and a half inches wide. And it goes, it travels down two and a half inches for two and three quarters inches. This is um, quarter inch graph paper, so every square is a quarter of an inch. So this right here is two and three quarters inches down. So once you hit that, then you're gonna curve around to form the stocking shape. The total height is five and a quarter. And this across is from here all the way out to here is three and a half. So you start with a three and a half by five and a quarter rectangle, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, down to two and three quarters, and then round it out. And remember, there is a quarter of an inch seam allowance included in the pattern. So it won't have this precise dimension when you're finished, but it will be a little bit more narrow and it's just smaller all over. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.